Okay, let's do it. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I want to tell you all about the historic theater that you're sitting in, the Ellen. Bozeman had quite a few theaters before the Ellen was built, including the Gem, the Lyric Theater, the Globe, and the Bozeman Orpheum. But in 1919, the owners of the Gem decided to build a more beautiful and elegant building for their shows and movies. Investors in the new theater included Nelson Story Jr., T. Byron Story, H.R. Green, and Otto Schmidt. They put up $100,000 to build what they called one of the first and most complete show houses of the size in the Northwest. The theater gained its name from Ellen Trent Story, wife of Nelson Story Sr. and mother to Nelson Story Jr. and T. Byron Story. One of the first women living in Bozeman in the 1860s, she eventually became part of a women's group called the Bozeman State Housekeepers Society. They worked to encourage and stimulate interest in more scientific methods of housekeeping, while also discussing history, literature, and national women's issues. The planning committee hired Fred Wilson, a local architect, to design the, to design the new and beautiful theater. Fred Wilson was the son of Bozeman pioneers General Lester and Emma Weeks Wilson, and was educated here at MSC, at Columbia University, and in Europe. Fred Wilson is quite well known in Bozeman for his designs of our, many of our important historic places, including the Baxter Hotel, Gallatin County Courthouse, and dozens of private residences. He designed the Ellen Theater to take up the entire 56 by 150 foot empty lot just to the west of the Chambers Fisher's department store. The theater was designed using steel, brick, terracotta, and stone, and the front of the theater is designed to convey its theatrical purposes. Fred Wilson's design incorporated many modern features. A candy shop located in the entrance sold sweets to theater goers, while a large stage allowed the theater to accommodate vaudeville shows as well as play silent movies. Dressing rooms for shows are located underneath the stage, and a slide from the alley into the basement allowed for easy transportation of sets, props, and costume trunks. The operating room for the movies was located under the balcony, allowing for the movie to fall directly on the screen instead of at an angle. This resulted in an improved viewing experience for guests. In the front of the building, a private banquet and dance hall was included that had its own restroom, private entrance, and dumbwaiter. It incorporates those tall Romanesque arched windows that you can see on the second story. The design also featured a section of seats permanently reserved for the story family and friends. The first two rows of seats in the balcony supposedly had the best acoustics and still today feature cushier seats than the rest of the theater. How are you guys doing up there in the first two rows of the balcony? You guys comfy? <laughs> the finished theater had about 800 seats and cost $150,000. The Ellen Theater opened on December 1st, 1919. The movie that evening was The Miracle Man, telling the story of a group of con men who proposed to use a faith healer to swindle people out of their money. Admission for the show was $1 for adults, 50 cents for children with a 10 cent war tax added. The movie ran for two days. Shortly after the opening of the theater, the Ellen hosted its first vaudeville act. The Ellen was part of the Pantages vaudeville circuit. The theater hosted many performances, including the musical Kismet, which featured live elephants parading across the stage. Other famous human performers included Vivian Vance, later of I Love Lucy fame, and Sally Rand, a famous fan dancer who would dance seemingly nude, covered only by her ostrich feather fans and lit by a soft blue light. During Sally Rand's performance in Bozeman, the spotlight operator accepted a dare to flood the stage with a bright light at a revealing moment. <laughs> that spotlight operator was Ed Pegram, later a manager of the Ellen, who often played the Ellen's Wurlitzer organ. In 1925, the Ellen Theater added a Wurlitzer organ. Marketed as Mighty Wurlitzers, the Ellen's version cost $16,000 and was added to create music and sound effects for silent movies. The organ consisted of a console, much like this one pictured here, and pipes ranging from two inches to 14 feet high. All the organ pipes are over here in this one and the percussion pipes up here in this fake box seat. In 1929, the Ellen was equipped for talking movies and in the 1930s went, underwent extensive repairs and renovations. This marks the beginning of a stable period for the Ellen of about 60 years, from the 1930s to the 1990s. Uh, the Ellen was owned by the same family and enjoyed a large amount of success. Unfortunately, the Ellen began to fall on hard times in the 1990s. The rise of VHS and home entertainment spelled the end for many single screen theaters across America. Carmack Cinemas was leasing both the Ellen and the Rialto theaters at the time, and their lease was set to expire, and they were not expected to renew. The Ellen was still owned by the Russell family, but its future was uncertain. In what seemed like the last hurrah before the closing of the theater, the Ellen played host to the world premiere of Jurassic Park 3 in 1998. 
Bozeman audiences waited in a thunderstorm outside for up to two hours to cheer for several scenes featuring Montana landscapes. Special guests for the world premiere included Jeff Bridges and Aussie Davis. As all of us sitting here today know, the 1990s was not the end of the Allen Theater. In April of 2008, Montana Theater Works, a local theater company, borrowed $1.2 million and put a down payment on the Ellen. Volunteers put in long hours into wiping curtains and walls and cleaning up the last of the gum and soda stains left over from the Ellen's days as a movie theater. The grand reopening took place December 5, 2008 with A Christmas Carol, the first live performance in several years on the theater's stage. But the project has just begun. TheaterWorks had put, has put hundreds of thousands of dollars and even more love into the restoration of the Ellen. Many updates have been made over the years by Montana TheaterWorks, but they have always stayed true to Fred Wilson's vision and reused and remade original parts wherever they could. Even going so far as to make modern copies of the molding and the light fixtures in the entryway, reusing doors in different parts of the building. Even the bathrooms feature sinks that look like those that would have been available in 1919. Every ticket sold at the Ellen puts one more dollar in the restoration fund. Today, the Ellen is a hub of the Bozeman community and a downtown staple. It doesn't matter if you like magic, horror movies, old westerns, lavish musicals, irreverent comedy, bluegrass music, or even Pachachka presentation, the Ellen hosts it all. Over 280,000 people have visited the Ellen since its grand reopening in 2008. But as executive director John Luden said to me, there is still so much to do. While updates are constantly being made to the Allen, its history and its character remain unchanged. Thank you so much for coming down tonight to learn about this historic place. I hope that every time you come to the Allen and you sit in these seats, you think back just for a minute about the hundreds of thousands of Bozemanites who have sat there before you and the wonderful shows they must have seen. Thank you.